Amen. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a portrait of glory divine. Hills of salvation, purchase of God, point of his spirit. Submission, perfect delight. This morning, the scripture is coming from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, starting at the fourth verse. And it reads Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto, unto men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful of nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come this morning in thy divine presence. Yes. For in the precious name of Jesus, we we'll just thank you for the blessing thou have bestowed upon us. For well, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this watching over us last night, Heavenly Father, and waking us up this morning, Lord Jesus, starting us on another day's journey, Heavenly Father. Yes. Go before us today, lead, guide, and protect us, Heavenly Father. Yes. Bless us with the blessing you see we stand in need of, Heavenly Father. You have been good to us. Everybody the good. And we just want to say thank you. Just bless my Zion church family as a whole today, Lord Jesus. Bless the ones that are on the way and bless the ones that just can't make it this morning, Heavenly Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Bless our pastor, Lord Jesus, and all the ministers here at Mount Zion, Lord Jesus. 
Bless all our auxiliaries here, Heavenly Father, in a mighty way, Lord. You keep up all of us together in your name, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless the sick members here, Lord Jesus, at Mount Zion, Lord Jesus. Touch, heal, and by your stripes. We all are healed this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be a light unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. Keep us in that straight and narrow path, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. You brought us from a long ways, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You said in your word, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for going to the cross for all of us, Heavenly Father. That we could live, Lord Jesus, be with you one day, Lord Jesus. Yes. And we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. You have been good to us. I just want to say thank you. We love you, Heavenly Father. Give us what we need to continue to go on. Just praising you, Lord Jesus. You worthy be praised, Lord Jesus. These blessings we ask in your precious name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Bless his of the saints to the going down of the same. Praise him. Let us continue to pray. The Bible said man ought to always pray. Always pray. Uh, we're going to close this part of the, of the services and turn it over to our pastor. Hallelujah. 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 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Let us lift up his name. Let us glorify his name. Let us do it together. David declared, I was glad when they said unto me, I was also glad, let us go into the house of the Lord. After the choir sings, Reverend Clark will come with the morning prayer and scripture. Amen? I don't know what's waiting on me in the future. I just don't know, I don't know what I'll be doing 10 years from now. I just don't know, but I believe, I believe that I'll be singing, I'll be singing or teaching God's holy word. Cause it's in my heart waiting on me in the future I just don't know I don't know what I'll be doing 10 years from now I just don't know but I believe I believe that I'll be singing, I'll be singing. Or teaching God's holy word Cause it's in my heart and dreary I can hardly find my way sometimes my burden gets so heavy that I can't stop having sleepless nights and lonely lonely days but I believe, I believe if I keep holding, I on, keep holding on God's gonna comfort me and keep me strong Cause it's in my heart It's in my heart To serve the Lord It's in my heart It's in my heart To serve the Lord It's in my heart It's in my heart To serve the Lord And I'll be serving I'll be serving the Lord I've been singing for a long, long time I'm not gonna give up I say I got a made up mind I've been lied on, mistreated By my so-called friends But if I had another chance, y'all I'd do it all again Cause it's in my heart can hardly find my way sometimes my burden gets so heavy that i can't stop having sleepless nights 
and lonely, lonely days. But I believe, I believe, I just keep holding I on. Keep holding God's on. gonna strengthen me and keep me strong. Cause it's in my heart. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. It's in my heart. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. God planted his love. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. Down in my heart. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for a brand new day, Father God. Father God, we thank you for an opportunity to, to come together and glorify you and lift up your holy and righteous name, Father God. Father God, we know that you're God all by yourself, Lord God. Lord, we thank you because you're the maker, the creator, and the sustainer of everything, Father God. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who you sent to save us from our sin, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, our leader, our guide, and our comforter, Father God, our constant friend, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, because you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son that whosoever believeth that him should not perish but have everlasting life, Lord God. And we just say thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you right now just to forgive us for our sin, Lord. Forgive us for the things that we did that we should not have done. And forgive us for the things that you told us to do, Lord God, and we failed to do it, Lord. We ask you just to forgive us, and we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you touched us with your finger of love and had us to rise this morning, Father God, with a desire to come to your house, Lord God so that we could gather together in your name, Father God, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory, Father God. Lord, we just thank you for all of your mighty works in our lives, Lord God. Lord, we know this morning that there are those who stand in need of a healing, Lord God. And Father God, we know that you are a healer, Lord God. You said that you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace is it's upon you, Lord God, and by your stripes we are healed, Lord God. Yes. Father, there are those who are lying in their sick beds this, uh, this morning, Lord God. Lord, I want, you just, I want them to just feel your presence, Lord God. Let them know that you are right there with them, Lord God, no matter what they're going through, Lord God. Remind them that you are loving God, you are caring God, Lord God. Remind them that you are there. You'd never leave them, Father, nor would you forsake them, Lord God. 
You are a healer, and we know that you are a healer. So we ask for healing right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, you say we have not because we ask not, but we come asking for healing. We come asking for deliverance, Lord God. There are those who still stand in need of a deliverance, Lord God. Deliver them, Lord. Give them a desire to call on you, Lord God. Heal their hearts, heal their minds, heal their spirits, Lord God. So that they can lean and depend on you, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for drawing us here together, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for the word that you have placed within Pastor Bolton to give unto us, Lord God. Lord, we are continuously studying your word and reading your word and learning your word, Lord God, so that we can have a closer walk with you, Lord God. And we know that the word that you sent to us this morning, Lord God, we will hide it in our hearts, Lord God, so that it can manifest itself, Father God, in the way that we talk to each other, the way we walk with each other, the way that we treat each other, Lord God. Lord, we want to be doers of your words and not hearers only, Father God, deceiving just ourselves, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for our pastor, Lord. We thank you for how you're blessing and keeping him, Lord God. Thank you for his family, Sister Tanya and Alexander and Christopher, Lord God. We thank you how you're keeping them, Father God. We just glorify you, magnify you, Lord God. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning will be coming from... Ephesians, the first chapter, no, I'm sorry, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 8. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 8. And if you can, will you please stand in reverence to the word of God. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, the mind, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, for by grace, one more time, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. God's words for God's people. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. While I'm on the Christian journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me.
Praise the Lord, Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a great day Amen. to be alive. Amen. Amen. We give God great glory this morning. We thank him for Jesus, our elder brother. Thank him for his Holy Spirit, our leader, our teacher, and our guide. Thank God for all who gathered with us this morning, our deacons and trustees, our officers, and all our, our, our I start to say all, oh, but Reverend Clark, <laughs> and all who aren't here either, they, they, they're a blessing to Mount Zion, amen? Thank God for everyone being in their respective places this morning. Thank God for all our members and those who are joining us this morning on Facebook. Amen. <laughs> good morning to the Irish. We thank God for the Irish being with us this morning, our good friends. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord this morning. And it hails from the fourth chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4. And I'm going to read the first 12 verses of that chapter, and I recommend you read the rest. Y'all promise you you're going to read the rest? Yes, sir. Amen. If y'all don't promise me, I'm going to read all of it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Reads this way. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bared his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt not thou be accepted? And if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, it's preaching time, God. Thank you for being the great preacher. Fill me with your spirit and use me to your greater glory. Oh, this is preaching time. This is your time with your people. Yes. Father, here we are. You know us by name. You know what we deal with. You know what our needs are. If there's one who needs a healing, thank you, Lord God, for healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for setting free. Thank you for salvation for one who needs to be saved this morning. If they're one who has lack in their home, thank you for providing for them, Lord. Whatever your people stand in need of, Lord, meet them right now at the point of their need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we will continue our series. It's part two today. Bloodline. Bloodlines. Now, our topic this morning is what have you done? What have you done? Last week, part one was Jesus, our blood brother. 
We came from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. And we talked about how our society um, puts a lot of stock in the bloodlines of humans and animals. And some in the horse racing industry really depend on it. And some pay as much as a million dollars plus for a newborn horse that can't even run, staggers around because of its bloodline. Maybe it comes from a thoroughbred that was a championship racer. But they're willing to pay that much, thinking it's going to pay off because of their bloodline, who their daddy was. And so it is with humans as well. We pay a lot of attention to our bloodlines. We hold family reunions, trace our genealogy, we create family trees to keep up with our bloodlines. Bloodlines come with positives and negatives. There's some families just good looking because it's in the bloodline. There's some families because it's in the bloodline. Why you might inherit good health through your bloodline? You also can inherit chronic conditions and other illnesses, but genetics alone don't determine what families might pass along. Bloodlines go beyond just having the same blood. We're talking about kinship, which includes the environment that people raise their children in, the values that they teach them or not, and the traditions and other social and, 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 and various other traits that they pour into their children. And those things determine what kind of people those children are going to come to be. Those kind of things impact generation after generation. And it's amazing what bloodlines can do. Uh, as you all know, I didn't grow up in the home with my father. And he had another family on the other side of town. And I went and visited Sister Tanya and I this church called Bethel AME Church, and then we liked it, and we stayed another week, and we liked it, and we stayed another week. Then finally, we decided to join. And so one day, we went up and joined, and one of my nieces were there, and she came down, and then this other young lady came down. And after um, service, I found out she was one of my nieces, but we didn't know each other. And she said to me, she said, when you walked in the church, I said, that man walks like my granddaddy. Bloodline, Lord have mercy, they can be strong. As much as we try to separate races and ethnicities, and Lord knows some of us try, as much as we try to pit families against families, the fact is we're all descended from Adam and Eve. And the focus of the, uh, the, the Bible is God's will to take us from our various families, our, uh, our, our racial groups, our et ethnic groups, from those bloodlines and lead us to the one bloodline, that of Jesus the Christ. Jesus' bloodline was established at the cross when he shed his blood. And he did it to form that one new bloodline. A bloodline for all people, all races, all ethnicities. Ephesians 2, 11 through 16 tells us that uh, God worked through Jesus to bring us all under one unifying bloodline that compels all people to live together as children of God. Christ himself brought us to peace, uniting us all. In spite of our natural families, God is calling us to look beyond our natural family. The pastor didn't tell you to go home and hate your family. The pastor didn't tell you to kick nobody out. The pastor didn't tell you to stop calling nobody. But I'm telling you that God is calling us beyond our natural family. If your natural family can get you to heaven, stick with them. If your natural family can save you, stick with them. If the natural family can heal your body, stick with them. 
But if you find out they just can't happen, they just so happen that they can't do it, God is calling us. And he, and, 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 and he wants our natural families to come with us. He's calling us beyond the flesh, beyond our culture, beyond our skin color. He's calling us to join the bloodline of Christ. Jesus is calling us into fellowship with all saints. There have been many bloodlines, but no bloodline supersedes Christ's bloodline. Adam had a bloodline, but his bloodline has to bow to Jesus. Moses had a bloodline, but his bloodline has to bow to Jesus. Abraham had a bloodline, but his bloodline had to bow to Jesus. I got a bloodline, but it's got to bow to Jesus. You've got a bloodline, but it must bow to Jesus. Jesus' bloodline is preeminent. It's a bloodline set forth from the foundation of the world. Our blood, our bloodlines are riddled with sin and shame, and brokenness. But Jesus' bloodline heals all of our brokenness, strengthens us. His is a lasting bloodline. The Bible says that now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We're saved by the blood. We're delivered by the blood. We are set free by the blood. We are healed by the blood. We are blessed by the blood. We are set free. We are made whole by the blood. And that brings us to today's topic. What have you done? What have you done? I told y'all, these won't be, won't, won't be shouting. This is just little Bible studies. Amen. Amen. I'll be teaching. What have you done? Genesis 4 tells us of the tra tragic story of Cain and Abel. And it's a story that teaches us not that not just what we do matters. See, because some folks just focus on what you do. But God is, is interested in more than what you do. He's interested in how you do it and why you do it. Lord have mercy. Somebody say amen again. Amen. Our attitudes matter. I'm talking about a heart matter. Yeah. Chapter 4 begins by telling us that Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and, and bare a son named Cain. And Eve said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And we know no doubt that she was excited. This was the first birth on earth. Uh -huh. And the birth of a child is an amazing miracle, even today. But Adam and Eve would, would learn that the sin that they had ushered into the world, when they bit of that fruit, that they had passed that sin through their bloodline. Sin that would bring lying and deceit and jealousy and unbelief and, yes, murder. After Cain's birth, Adam and Eve had another son named Abel. Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a farmer. And verses 3 through 5 tell us that at harvest time, Cain brought forth fruit of the ground and, and gave an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought up uh, the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof. And the Lord, tell, it tells us, had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, God had no respect. Cain, it tells us, was very raw. And his countenance fell. And many people ask, well, why did God accept Abel's offering? And not Cain's. Some say that um, Abel gave of his first and his best of the fatty portion of his flock. And that pleased God. And they say, but uh, Cain presented God with just some, just a little bit of his harvest. And that that didn't please God. 
Other people say that God accepted Abel's sacrifice because he shed blood. But can I tell y'all that this wasn't simply about the offering? With God, the focus is on the giver, not the gift. God doesn't need our money. Y'all agree with that? The earth is the Lord. The food is there all. The world and all and everybody, me, you, and who's and ever who dwell therein. He put the gold in the earth. He put the oil in the earth. He put the silver in the earth. But yet he tells us to bring our tithes and offering to the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. But it's not just about the offering. It's about the spirit and the condition of our spirit. Will we be obedient? So the focus is not on the giver. It's on the giver and not the gift. The condition of the heart is more important to God than the offering. Abel went out of his way to please God. But Cain gave grudgingly. God respected Abel because of Abel's attitude. And and here's what he knew. He knew that Abel's attitude would allow him to treat people right because he had the right attitude. He knew that Abel's attitude would be stable and anywhere he went in all parts of his life, he was going to act the same way. But Cain, Lord have mercy, he saw Cain differently. See, God saw the heart and and knew the thoughts of both Cain and Abel. And while he accepted Abel's offering, he rejected Cain's. But can I tell you, he didn't just reject Cain's offering. He rejected Cain. We look at the uh, uh, the offerings and, and and we wonder, well, what makes them different? But while man looks on the outside, God, Looks at the heart. Look at how Moses constructs these verses in verses 4 and 5. He says, the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now let me read to you what you don't hear. The Lord had respect unto Abel, therefore he respected his offering. Did y'all get that? But unto Cain and his offering... He had not respect. God did not respect Cain's attitude, the condition of his heart. Therefore, he did not accept his offering. Cain could have had a a million dollars. Abel could have had a hundred dollars. But because of the condition of their heart, You ever had somebody give you something who you didn't like? Or who didn't like you? But then, and and it could have been something real nice. You're like, I don't know why they gave it to them because I I, I didn't didn't know they were coming to my party. And it could be something real nice, but then then you kind of, but then somebody you you really like come and give you, it's just just a nice little trinket. You love it like it's the best thing you ever got in comparison to what that other person gave. That's what was happening with Cain and Abel. Y'all getting this? <laughs> so the Bible says that Cain was very wroth, meaning that he was angry, he was wrathful, and his countenance fell. He looked annoyed and, and hostile. Sin had been introduced into the bloodline and, and had begun to produce destructive fruit in Cain in the form of wrath and anger. And it would yet produce even darker fruit in the form of treachery and murder. 1 John 3 and 12 confirms the difference between Cain and Abel as being a heart problem. It says that Cain uh, was of the wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore he slew him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So God didn't respond to Cain's offering as much as he responded to his attitude. 
your attitude or your regard for a person or a thing will dictate how you treat that person or that thing. God knew the heart of Cain. He knew sin was strong around Cain and that this would not only impact his offering, but it would impact how he would operate in the earth. It would impact how he treated other people. And although God rejected Cain's offering, though, he gave him a chance to repent. And God says to Cain in verses 6 and 7, he says, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. God says, Cain, why are you so angry, upset, and mad? He said, if you do the right thing, you'll be accepted. But if not, sin lies in wait at the door for you. It wants to pounce on you. But you can rule over it. You are able to rule over it. God is essentially giving Cain the same choice he gave his mom and his daddy. He gives him free will to choose God through obedience or choose sin through disobedience. And what Cain should have done right then and there is repent and do right. Instead, he didn't check himself. He didn't check that attitude. Instead of repenting and getting right with God, Cain took out his anger on his brother. Cain talked to God, and then he did what a lot of us do. We pray. That's talking to God, right? We pray. Pray about a situation. Then we get up and go do what we want to do. We pray about a challenge with our spouse or our family. We pray about something at church. We pray about the job. Then we get up and go do it our way. After Cain had talked with God, verse 8 says he tells Abel, Abel, let's go out to the fields. And when he got there, he attacked his brother and he murdered him. Beloved, let me tell you something. Be careful what you do after you pray. Do what God says and do it his way. Move based on the heart of God and not the heart of man. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked, uncurably wicked. Who can know it? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tell us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct thy path. Instead of attacking Abel, you know what Cain should have done? She should have asked his brother a couple of questions. He should have asked Abel, how did you get to the point that you could give God that kind of offering? He should have asked him, can you help me grow to that point? But you know, that's something we don't do enough in the church. We don't share our growth stories. We don't ask to be helped to grow. How we grew in the word. How we grew in worship. Brothers and sisters, don't hate your sister because of her praise. Don't dislike that brother because of his service. Instead of talking about the saints, ask them how are they able to get to the place where they are in Christ. Ask them what can I do to be more diligent in prayer? What can I do to draw closer to God? How did you become a tither and how can I become a tither? Sometimes we, uh, we've got to not be so proud and, and just flat out say, brother, I've been in the church 40 years and I am not saved. What must I do to be saved? Ain't no shame in that. Shame isn't going to hell through the church. And beloved, Stop getting that angry at other people when you fall short of what God requires. Stop getting angry at other people when you fall short of your own expectations. Stop looking at other people and what they're doing and comparing yourself to them. 
Cain killed his brother because he was measuring himself against his brother. He got jealous and prideful, and instead of getting it right with God, he blamed his brother for his failure to properly honor God. When his daddy Adam fell, Adam blamed Eve, that woman you gave me. Lord have mercy. And now the son is blaming his brother. That brother you gave me. And he killed Abel thinking he somehow would be better off because the one he measured himself against was gone. Beloved, we compare ourselves with one another far too much. Far too much. We should be pleasing God, not keeping up with the Joneses. But it even happens in families where I've seen where families are competing with one another. Spouses competing with one another. Husband against wife, sibling against sibling. Even in the church, church member against church member. Stop hating on other people who are walking in the will of God and are being blessed. Stop killing people with your rumors and foul words and hateful looks just because they're growing and you're not. Bringing them down won't lift you up. Killing them won't solve your problem. Get right with God. And I'll say to you what God said to Cain. Do right and you will be accepted. But if not, sin lies in wait at your door. If you don't check yourself and walk in obedience, things will get worse instead of better. And sin will have rule over you instead of you ruling it. And if you're not careful, that same sin that you struggle with will manifest itself in your children and your children's children for generations to come. It'll permeate your bloodline and you will have a family that tears one another down rather than lifts one another up. Abel wasn't Cain's competition. He was his brother. Your husband is not your competition. He's your man. Your wife is not your competition. She's your woman. Your pew member is not your competition. Your choir member is not your competition. Your pastor is not your competition. But sometimes we get the eye of Cain. Brothers should be each other's best cheerleaders. They should have one another's back. The Bible tells us that a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born in adversity. I'm going to get ready to wrap up today. Verses 9 and 10. God asks Cain a couple of questions. Where is Abel, thy brother? And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Lord have mercy. If my mom would have asked me where my brother was, <laughs> and I said, I don't know. Am I my brother? I wouldn't have been able to finish the sentence. I've been getting up off the floor. <laughs> God is a good and loving God. <laughs> Lord have mercy. He tolerates y'all. He basically was saying, it's not my day to babysit Abel. But God didn't ask Cain where his brother was because he didn't know. He wanted to give Cain an opportunity to confess and repent. But Cain got indignant, and God said, what have you done? What have you done, Cain? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. What have you done, Cain? How far have you allowed sin to push you? You have killed your brother. What have you done? You have destroyed the family. What have you done? You have committed the first murder. What have you done? You have ushered in death into the earth. What have you done, Cain? And beloved, God is asking us that same question today. What have you done? What have you done in and to your families? 
What have you done to your spouse? What have you done to your children? What have you done in and to your church? Who have you hurt? Who have you demeaned? Who have you cheated? What have you done? What sin have you unleashed in your home? What burden have you brought upon your family? Who have you killed with your words or with your gossip or with your rumors? Have you uh, been in unnecessary and unhealthy competition with your spouse or with your brother or with your friend? Have you been a help or a hindrance to the church? What have you done? The Bible tells us, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He died for her. What have you done? You tell wives to, to reverence their husband, even calling them Lord, little L, as Sarah called Abraham Lord. He said, subject yourself one to another. What have you done? Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. What have you done? Beloved, we've got this sin, sinful habit of slaughtering those closest to us and then try to love them again after we said it, after we've done it, after we've mistreated them, after we've given them a cold shoulder, after we've walked out, after we've turned our back, but we slaughtered them emotionally, spiritually, and yes, sometimes physically. We have the symbol for habit of destroying our own. Cain slaughtered his brother. We kill the people closest to us. We hurt those closest to us. We hurt our wives. We hurt our husbands. We hurt our sons and we hurt our daughters. We hurt our pew members and fellow choir members. We hurt our families. If we can't love them, we can't love God. The Bible asks the question, how can you love God whom you have never seen and hate your brother who you see basically daily? How can you love God and kill your brother? How can you love God and hate the saints? How can you love God and abuse your wife or abuse your husband? In Cain, we see uh, the devastating effects of sin. Sin passed down through the bloodline. He became a liar, an enemy of God, and a murderer in one fell swoop. That's how a slippery slope sin is. We lean toward disobedience and sin. If Cain just simply does right, and we know right from wrong, James 4, 17 says, he who knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. But if he would just done right, then God would have gladly accepted him. But he refused to repent. Some of us is hard-hearted, hard-headed, and the truth is that spiritually backward. As a result, God said to Cain, you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you. No matter how hard you work, from now on you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. But you know, even at that, God was showing him mercy by allowing him a new start in life. But we've got to be careful, beloved, about how we treat one another. We need to take inventory over what we have done. What have you done? What mess did you make? And when are you going to clean it up? What have you done? Who did you do it to? Some of us have done it to so many people, we forgot some of them. <laughs> but God has not forgotten. Yeah. Cain thought he, would, he could hide it. But God sees all. Yeah. And he's going to hold us account for what 
we have done. But thank God for 1 John 1 and 9. If you confess with your mouth, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. This bloodline we have will have us doing things to people over and over and over again. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. You can't outgrow it. You might not be able to do some things you did to people in the past, but you might not be able to do your young stuff, but you can do your old stuff. Nobody outgrows sin. But we can go to Jesus and say, Lord, I said it. I did it. I thought it. It wasn't for my wife's good. It wasn't for my husband's good. I broke my children. I raised all kind of sand in the church. People on the job turn around when they see me coming. What have you done? If you're willing to face what you've done, come to the altar today. What have you done? You don't have to tell me. We must tell Jesus. Because no matter how good a family you got, no matter how great a pedigree you got, Jesus will change your pedigree. Altar is open. It's praying time. First thing between you and the Lord. You know what it is you have done. You know what it is that you are doing. Give that to God today. And ask God to forgive you. To restore you and restore those relationships. Including the relationship with him. And then others may have particular Situations or people they would like to lift up today in prayer. You can call those names. Amen. 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 Alexander Bolton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, creator of the ends of the earth. Lord, there's no searching of your understanding. Father, you're an awesome wonder, the one in whom we live, move, and have our being. The one, Father God, for whom nothing is too hard. Father, Lord, there's nothing impossible for you. God, we thank you for being our God, the God who blesses us, for being Elroy, the God who sees us, 
Lord, we know you see all, God. And Lord, we say, forgive us. Forgive us for all we said and done and thought. Forgive us, Lord God, when we bruised people, when we've cheated people, we've lied on people, we've spread rumors and gossip, when we've left them broken, when we left them alone, we could have helped and walked away. Forgive us, God. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us in the blood of the, the Lamb. Give us clean hands and pure hearts and renew right spirits in us. We need you, God. We can't live this life without you. Without you, Lord, we'd be just like Cain, sliding into sin, Lord, hurting those who are the closest to us. But we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the bloodline of Christ. Lord, we love you, God. And Lord, you've heard all the names that were called. You know all about them. Thank you for healing. Thank you for strengthening. Thank you for raising up. Bless indeed, Lord God. Show yourself strong, God. We lay our loved one at the feet of Jesus. For we know there's power, healing power, in the hem of his garment. Deliverance power. Breakthrough power. There are miracles, Lord. And we thank you for being a miracle-working God. Unleash your power in our midst, Lord. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we trust you, Lord. We give them over to you, Father. Bless them indeed, Lord. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We know that with your stripes, they are healed. We know that you decided that they prosper and be in good health even as their soul prospers. We know, Lord God, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Lord. We know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. So we're just thanking you now. We come leaning on you. We come leaning on you for that child who needs to be saved. We come leaning on you for that brother who needs a job. We come leaning on you for that one father who needs to be turned around, Lord God. Show enough head to hell, but you can turn them around and direct them to heaven, God. We lean in on you, Lord. Yes. Bless these, your people. You heard, Father God, their cries. Bless all under the sound of my voice. There might be one who didn't raise up, Father God, a petition, Lord God, but all of us could declare, it's me. Yes. It's me, oh Lord. Yes. Standing yes. in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of a touch from the master. A hug from you, Lord God. Need to be embraced by you, Lord. Shunned by the world, but loved by you. Father, we thank you, God. We bless you now. We adore you. We magnify you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 One. Can wind away my sins, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. One can make me whole again, oh, nothing. Oh, Brad. 
Announcements before we have the benediction. Mount, Mount Zion Baptist Church, thanks so much for the monetary gift to assist in my continued education. Please continue praying for me. Love, Brianna S. Dow. Amen. <laughs> Brother Tyler, tell Bree, keep on going. Amen. Don't stop. And I definitely would like to thank you all for all your prayers and gifts and blessings toward uh, Alexander. We did. took him up on Tuesday. Almost hadn't heard high in a hair ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it must be good. <laughs> now he's practicing. They're practicing football, and we, we get the checks here and there. And he's, he's selling in and enjoying it. Amen. <laughs> this comes from Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Association. Uh, we greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray that you and your family are continuing to be safe and are sprinkled with an abundance of God's love. The planning meeting for the 104th annual session of the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Association will be held at the Mount Moriah Baptist Association Fuel Center. That's a blessing right there. Y'all know the center hadn't been open for, for months and months since December. But the, the work has been completed and able to be occupied. So, and that will be Saturday, uh, Saturday, Saturday coming, August 19th at 10 a.m. And the theme for this year's session is Walking with God in this Sinful World. Reverend Everett Johnson and the members of Heiko Missionary Baptist Church will serve as host pastor in church. And the format of the uh, annual session will be discussed at the meeting to determine if the membership wants to continue with the abbreviated program used previously. Somebody say amen. From the Sanders Creek Baptist Church, Dear pastor and members of Mount Zion Baptist Church, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sanders Creek Baptist Church cordially invites you to our annual revival to be held on Tuesday, August 22nd through Friday, August 25th, beginning at 7 p.m. nightly. Elder Michael Boone, lead singer for the Five Singing Stars, formerly led by the late Tommy Ellison, will be the revivalist for the week. Come and enjoy nightly inspiring messages that will revive us all again. Some of y'all, if you went to the Mamariah, the, the association revival, y'all heard Pastor Boone. Amen. Mount Zion Baptist Church, right here, we have our revival this week. And uh, as discussed, tomorrow we will have um, prayer. At 7.15, prayer is a critical part of revival. Amen? Amen. At 7.15, we're going to do that via Zoom. But we'll be here on Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday night with Pastor um, Marion Bennett. And then on that Wednesday, Pastor uh, Richard James. Amen? Amen? 6.45, we'll start devotion. I'd like to ask those um, who are members of outreach or who'd like to assist with the back to school um, event next um, on Saturday at Hermitage Farms on uh, 10 to noon. If you would stay after worship just for a few minutes, our illustrious 
the president, Sharon Hampton, going to lead us in our meeting. Amen. Somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Amen. And I think that's all I have. Again, I want to thank the Ivories for, for joining us this morning. Amen. Now, they will tell y'all that they've come a long way. They haven't come that long. They, come, they live over where I live, so. <laughs> Let us stay. <laughs> My brother. Bloodlines, what have you done? Lord, we bless you, we glorify you, we magnify your holy and your righteous name. Bless these now, your people. Bless them in their going out and their coming in, in the city and in the field. Father, there might be one who, Father, has a, an appointment this week that they're not sure about. Thank you for stepping into their next week ahead of them and making crooked ways straight and smoothing out rough paths. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, root, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.